Hi players, bonjour from Paris, my name is Asaf Hirsch and welcome to my channel Easy Board Games. Today I'm going to show how to play Company of Heroes the board game, which is something I'm super excited about because I just loved the PC game. So Company of Heroes is one, two, four, six, eight players, depends on how many expansions do you have, where players are going to take the role of different factions or more likely armies, like the British, the US, the Wehrmacht or the Soviet, and will try to achieve a certain amount of victory points. In this video, I'm going to cover only the basic rules, but in one of my next videos, I will cover also the advanced rules. As always, if you learn something new or if you saw something that you like, please consider subscribing to my channel and help me grow this community. Like and comment on the video, let me know if there is a specific game you would like me to show in this channel. Ready to master your army and maybe rewrite history? Let's go to setup. All right, guys, so the first thing that we would like to do is to choose on which map we would like to play. So over here in the mission booklet, if you turn into page 10, you'll be able to see that the map that is recommended for new players is called Trois Ponts, which means in French, three bridges. After we have chosen the map, we need to take the two sides of the board and set them together. Next to the board, we will put all the different dice, like we have over here the damage and defense dice, we have two other type of dice that we will talk about a little bit later and the universal cubes and the minis that represent the MG42, the mortars and the anti-tank gun. Then we're going to have two teams, either one versus one or two versus two, and each player will have to choose a faction. In this video, we will do one versus one. So the first player has chosen the US and the second player has chosen the Wehrmacht. And liebe Germans and Austrians, if you feel that I mispronounced one of the names, please drop me a comment. Then each player will take a player board, the commander cards, all the minis of their faction, nine command points of the chosen color, the three building cards, six of these plastic trays, and all the flags that they chosen, either blue or red. On the player board, in the income section, we will put one die on number one in the manpower, the same for ammunition and for fuel, but on the victory points, we're going to leave it at zero. In the stockpile section, we will put one universal die on number four, the same for uh, ammunition and fuel, but again, on victory points, we're going to leave it at zero. As you can see over here, only the first building will be facing up and the second and third building will be facing down. And that means that only the units from the first buildings are available. The last thing that each faction will do for setup is to spawn two green units. Green units are these units that you can see over here with a green heart. So here, for example, for the US, we see that we have riflemen and we have the mortar team. So the US will be able to spawn either two units of riflemen, two units of mortar team or one of each. We will go over the stats of each unit in just a few more seconds, but for now, let's just say that the US decided to spawn one rifleman squad and one mortar team. And the Wehrmacht faction will spawn one grenadier unit and one MG42 team. So since the US has decided to recruit a rifleman team, we can see that over here uh, inside this green heart, we have the number four. And that means that they will take this small plastic tray and they will put four units on them. And since they decided to recruit also a mortar team, they will take again this small plastic tray and they will put three units on this tray, right? Since we have here the number three inside the green heart, but they will add this mortar miniature. Going back to page 10 in the mission booklet, you'll be able to see that in this map, we have two spawning zones. The first team's spawning zone will be right over here from this hexagon till this one. The second team's spawning zone will be over here from this hexagon until this one. Pay attention that on this hex, since this is a lake, you will not be able to spawn units. The US faction will be right over here on this side and the Wehrmacht will be on the other one. So the US has decided to spawn the rifleman squad over here and the mortar team right over here. The Wehrmacht faction decided to do pretty much the same. So they will recruit one grenadier unit and then they decided to spawn also an MG42 team. The Wehrmacht decided the MG42 team will spawn over here and the grenadier unit over here. In each game of Company of Heroes, we will need to decide if we want the short version, that means achieving 13 victory points, the medium by achieving 15 victory points, or the long one by achieving 18 victory points. Victory points can be achieved by two ways. 
The first one is to control these points that we have over here, and the other way is to destroy the other faction's units. Each round consists three phases. The first one is the maneuver phase, where we will move the different units on the board. The second phase is the damage phase, where we will apply damage on the different units. And the third phase is the supply phase, where we will capture the different resource hexes, we will adjust our income and get the different resources, and we'll be able to spend these resources on the different units, buildings, upgrades, and the commander tiers. In order to determine which faction will go first, we will take three of these dice and we will roll them. The faction that has the most green sides will decide if they want to start or the other faction will start. So over here we see that the US rolled one green side and for the Wehrmacht we can see that they rolled zero green sides. In this case, the US will decide that they want to be the starting faction. The maneuver phase consists of three turns and in each turn, each faction will be able to spend three command points. With each command point, we will be able to move one hex. It's important to say that in each maneuver phase, each unit will not be able to spend more than three command points. So for example, the US will take their three command points and will decide how the different units will move. So this rifleman squad over here will be able to move one hex or two hexes or three hexes. And that means that for this turn, the mortar unit did not move. And also until the next maneuver phase, this rifleman squad will not be able to move anymore. Another movement example will be that the mortar team will move two hexagons and the rifleman squad will move one hexagon. After spending the three command points, the turn will pass to the Wehrmacht and they will be able to spend their three command points. The Wehrmacht will take the three command points and will move their MG42 team in this way. One, two, three hexagons. It's important to add that in each maneuver phase, each faction will have to spend their three command points or forfeit them. And that means that if now, again, it's the United States turn and they would like to move with this rifleman squad two steps, they will spend one command point and another to move all the way to this hex. So first of all, this unit already spent three command points and that means that until the next maneuver phase, they will not be able to move anymore. So the Americans still have one command point to spend, but they would not like to move their mortar team and that means that the last command point is being forfeited. They will not be able to use it in the next maneuver turn. And that means that we go back to the Wehrmacht turn. The Wehrmacht will move their Grenadier unit two steps. One, two. And they will forfeit their last command point. Going back to the United States, again, they have three command points to use. But we already know that this rifleman squad will not be able to move anymore. And they would not like to move their mortar team anymore. So they decide to forfeit all of their three command points. The Wehrmacht will do the same, since the Wehrmacht would not like to move their units also, they will also forfeit their three command points. And with that, we concluded the maneuver phase. At the end of the maneuver phase, we can take out all of these command points from the hexagons. Before we're going to continue to the next damage phase, let's take a few examples and understand how do we apply damage and what are the conditions. In order for a unit to apply damage to another unit, they need to meet two conditions. The first one is sight, and the second one is range. The basic sight that each unit has is two. I'm saying basic because this is something that for some units we will be able to upgrade later on. Sometimes we'll be able to increase our sight and range by upgrading specific units. When we'll upgrade that specific unit, we will be able to take this die and either increase that unit's uh, sight or even sight and range. So we'll just add this die next to the corresponding unit. The range is written for every unit on the building cards. The first example that we'll see is between the Grenadier of the Wehrmacht and the Rifleman of the US. In order to determine if the units can see each other, we need to draw a line from the center of one hexagon to the center of the other one. If the line is not being disturbed by a building, then it means that the units can see each other. If we would have had a building right over here, obviously that line would have been disturbed and that means that the unit cannot see each other, thus cannot shoot at each other. Now that we saw that the sight is okay, we need to go to the range. Now we already know that the range of both of these units is two. So since both sight and range are okay, they will be able to apply damage to each other. 
So the Grenadier unit will apply one damage to the Rifleman squad and the Rifleman will apply one anti-infantry damage to the uh, Grenadier unit. In Company of Heroes, damage happens simultaneously. So even by causing damage, you would destroy one of the units. That unit that being destroyed still would be able to apply their damage. Now we can go to the defense matrix and see what do we have over here. So both of the units are green and that means that they are totally vulnerable for anti-infantry damage. So both of these units will take damage and their health will be reduced by one. We're going to symbolize it by taking out one of the infantry units from each plastic tray. So just like we have an infantry unit that when it takes a hit, we just knock one soldier from the tray. When we'll have different vehicles that are taking a hit, we can do two things. Either to add one damage cube that we have over here next to the vehicle. But what I like to do is to just take this uh, cube and with that symbolize how many health uh, does this uh, current unit has. So if this Sherman tank will take a hit, we'll just put this cube right over here on number two. If it will take another hit, we will just turn this cube that it will show one. Now let's say that in a different example, this rifleman squad has been upgraded and it can do one more anti-infantry damage. The rifleman squad will be able to apply two anti-infantry damage to the grenadier unit and the grenadier unit will still do one anti-infantry damage to the rifleman squad. So here we can see that even though we have two anti-infantry damage and that means that this unit has been destroyed, it will still cause one anti-infantry damage to the rifleman squad. Here I would like to add that one spare damage round, the first time that a faction uh, dealt damage to another unit, they will receive one experience point. But it only happens once per damage phase. On the other hand, for each time that we have destroyed an enemy unit, we will receive another experience point. But this is not limited, so even if we have destroyed three units of the enemy, we will receive three experience points. On top of that, when we are destroying another faction's unit, we will receive one victory point to add to the stockpile. Let's take another example, but this time the rifleman unit has been upgraded to apply an armor piercing damage on top of their anti-infantry damage. So now they will do this two damage to the grenadier unit, while the grenadier unit will do the normal anti-infantry damage to the rifleman squad. So here we already know that the health of this unit will drop by one. So we can take one unit away from the tray. The same we will have with this die right over here. So one health will go down. But here we have something a little bit different. So when we look again at the defense matrix, we can see that green units have some sort of resistant to armor piercing damage. In this case, the grenadier unit will roll this die and see what is the outcome. If the outcome is one of the black or green sides, then this unit will not take damage. On the other hand, if we will have a red icon such as this or the fire, then it means that this unit has taken a hit and the health will drop by one. Let's take another example and see what's going on. Here we can see that we have a mortar team of the US and three hexes away, we can see that we have the grenadier unit of the Wehrmacht. Since both of these units are more than two hexes away, they cannot see each other. And that means that even though the mortar has a range of four, they will not be able to target the Wehrmacht unit. For this, we have something that is called a spotter unit. Now we can see that we have a rifleman unit two hexes away from the Wehrmacht unit. When one unit can see a rival unit, it acts as some sort of spotter for all the allied units. So here, maybe the mortar team cannot see the grenadier unit, but thanks to the rifleman squad that is spotting it, it can shoot on this unit because it has a range of four. On top of that, the damage that the mortar are doing is called high explosives. And when we have this kind of damage, it can shoot even above buildings. So let's just say that we would have had this house right over here. So even though we have this house that disturbs the direct line between the centers of the two hexagons, the high explosive damage that the mortar team can do goes on top of the building. I would also like to add that each unit will be able to target only one rival unit. So even if we would have had an upgrade for this grenadier unit, and that means that they're doing two anti-infantry damage, they would not be able to target these two units and cause one damage each, they would have to target one of these units. 
Now let's say that we have the Panzer IV tank right over here. The damage that the riflemen can do is only anti-infantry. When we're looking at the defense matrix, we can see that anti-infantry damage cannot hurt at all heavy vehicles like this Panzer IV tank. But still, the mortar team will be able to shoot at the tank and maybe cause to him damage, depends on the defense role. The last example that I would like to give you is about units inside buildings. And Patrick, thank you so much for clarifying everything for me. It's much more clearer right now. When we have units inside the building, they will get to have two defense dice. So we can put it right over here on their tray. Now, if we will have a damage phase, we can see that both of these units will be able to target the unit that is inside this home. Now, we know that according to the defense matrix, usually green units are completely vulnerable for anti-infantry damage. But in this case, this unit of the Wehrmacht will be able to roll two defense dice. So they will take two dice and will roll them. For each black or green roll that the Wehrmacht has, they will be able to avoid one point of damage. If in another roll they would have had, for example, one green die and one red die, then they would have been hit and their health would have dropped by one. The next phase is the damage phase, but since the units are still not in range, we're going to skip this phase and go directly to the supply phase. In the supply phase, we're going to follow a certain sequence. The first thing that we will do is to capture objectives. Objectives are these different hexagons that are spread across the map that have a certain resource that they can give us. For example, over here we have fuel, here we have manpower, here we have victory points, and here we have ammunition. At the beginning of the supply phase, if we have on these hexagons either a green unit or a unit with this symbol right over here, like we can see at the Willis Jeep, the unit will capture the objective. So for example, for the United States, Right over here, we see that the mortar team has captured this fuel point. So we're going to take one of these flags that the US chose at the beginning of the game, and we're going to put it on top of this uh, objective point. For each objective that the faction took, we will push one of these universal dice one step forward. So as we saw, the Americans captured one manpower point and one fuel point. So we will take this die and push it one forward and for the fuel also. Pretty much the same thing happens with the Wehrmacht. So we will take again one of these flags and put it right over here at the fuel point. And the same we will do with the manpower point right over there. Now we will collect our resources. Over here, we can see that the income of the Wehrmacht in manpower is two. So now we'll go to the stockpile and we'll push this die from four to six. The same we'll do with ammunition, but only one. So here in the stockpile, we'll push this die one step forward. And as you already understood, we're going to push two times with the fuel. As you can see, the income of the victory points is still zero. And that means that we will not receive victory points. The exact same thing we will do with the United States. So over here, two manpower, one ammunition, two fuel, and zero victory points. Now it's time to recruit new units. We will be able to recruit only the units that are available. And that means only with the building that is facing up. So we'll be able only to acquire units from this building, but obviously not from the second one or the third one since they're still face down. In order to recruit a unit, we will need to pay a certain price. So over here, the price of the rifleman is four manpower. A mortar team also cost four manpower. But a wheels jeep will cost two manpower and two fuel. Let's go a little bit into details of the different stats of the different units. So a rifleman, we already know that it has a health of four. Over here, we can see that the range is two. So while the rifleman has the range of two, the mortar team has a range of four. Next, we'll have the type of damage that this unit can do. Over here for the rifleman, we can see that it's anti-infantry. Over here for the mortar team, we can see that is a high explosive kind of damage. And then we have sometimes a specific bonus that we'll see a little bit further down the video. At the bottom section, we'll have the different upgrades that we can do. For the upgrades, we'll be able to pay either with ammunition that we have over here or with experience points. It's important to say that when we're upgrading a unit, we upgrade only one specific unit. It doesn't mean that every time we will spawn a unit, it will already have this upgrade. Also, each unit will be able to upgrade only one time per upgrade. 
So for example, when we're looking right over here at the 50 cal MG team, this unit will be able to upgrade only one time this upgrade and only one time this upgrade. Another thing that we'll be able to do in this phase is to build the new buildings. Usually in order to build the third building, we will have to buy first the second one. But the United States has the advantage that they don't need to build the second building in order to build the third one. But that means that they will have to pay one more fuel in order to do that. In order to unlock the second building over here, for example, we will need to pay three fuel and one manpower. So we will take down three fuel, one, two, three, and one manpower that we did right over here. And then we'll be able to take this building card, flip it to the other side. And now we can see that we have more units that we can recruit. So the next thing that the United States would like to purchase is the M8 Greyhound. So first of all, they will pay the cost, which is three manpower, one, two, three, and two fuel, so one, two. Then they will take the appropriate miniature and they will put it in the spawning row that we saw earlier on on the video somewhere around here. Let's say that the United States decide to take this Greyhound and put it over here. Now, if you pay close attention, we can see that we have this icon right over here. So right next to the Greyhound, we're going to take a die and we'll put it with the same icon right next to it. Now, they don't have a lot more resources, but they do see that they have five ammunition that they can uh, spend. So they can spend it on either upgrading the Rifleman Squad or the Mortar Team and even the Greyhound. The US decide that they would like to upgrade their Rifleman Squad, so they will pay for ammunition. So from five, it will go to one. And now they can decide if they would like to add the damage of anti-infantry or armor piercing. They decide that they would like to go with anti-infantry. So they again will take one of these dice and will put it on this side, right on the plastic tray of the specific unit, just like this. The Wehrmacht on the other hand would not like to build their second tier building. So the first thing that they would like to buy is the Kubelwagen. So they need to pay two manpower and two fuel. And then they will take the appropriate miniature and put it again on the spawning row wherever they want. So they will decide to put it right over here. The next thing that they would like to do is to recruit another MG42 team. So again, they will pay four manpower and immediately they would like to upgrade this unit. So they will pay four munition and they will decide to go with actually armor piercing damage. So again, they will take one of these dice and they will put it on the tray of the MG42 unit. They will spawn this unit right over here. The last thing that we have in the supplies phase is reinforce, repair, and default reinforcement point. Early in the game, we saw some units that have specific abilities. For example, the Rifleman Squad that has this bonus of repair right over here. And also we have the Willis Jeep with these two icons. We see that it has the, this ability right over here that means reinforce. Here we can see a Rifleman Squad that took a hit. And that means that they have three health instead of the maximum of four. If at the end of the supply phase, we will have a Willis Jeep adjacent to it, then this Jeep will be able to reinforce uh, this Rifleman Squad. And that means that we will be able to retrieve one a health point. In this case, it will again be at full health of four. Now let's take the contrary example and say that this Jeep has took a hit and it has only one health instead of the normal two. In this case, if it will be adjacent to the Rifleman squad at the end of the uh, supply phase, this squad will be able to repair this Jeep for one point. Thus, make sure that it is at full health again of two. Also for each uh, side, we will have in the spawning zone a point that is called the default reinforcement point. For the Wehrmacht, it will be right over here. And for the US, it will be right over here. In different maps, maybe we'll have a, a broader spawning zone. And that means that maybe we will have more than one default reinforcement point. Over here, we can see two units that already took some hits. The Sherman tank that already took two hits and the Rifleman squad that took one hit. If at the end of the supply phase, 
they are adjacent to the default reinforcement point, they will be able to restore one health each. So in the rifleman squad, for example, that means that we will be able to add another soldier to the tray. And in the case of the tank, we'll be able to restore one health. So that means that it will go from one to two. After finishing the supply phase, we will again start a new round with the maneuver phase. The side that will decide which team will go first is the side with the least stockpiled victory points. And that means that if, for example, the Wehrmacht would have had one victory point already stockpiled, then it would have been the United States that would need to decide if they want to go first or the Wehrmacht will go first. Since both of them are on zero, we will go to the income section. The player that has the lowest income in one of the parameters going from victory points and up will decide who will go first. And this is pretty much the way of the game to give an advantage to the losing side. So we can see again that the victory points income is zero for both sides. Fuel also is two for the both sides. But if, for example, the Wehrmacht would have had two a ammunition income, then it would have been the Americans that would decide who will go first. But again, we see that we have a tie. And also in the manpower, we have a tie. So again, we will need to roll three of these dice and the side that has the most green sides will decide who will go first. But the Wehrmacht decided that there will be gentlemen and after the last clash that they had with the United States on European soil, they will give them the right to decide. The US is very grateful and they decide that they want to go first. The US decide to take their three command points and move like this. The first step will be to move with this rifleman squad over here. The second one will be to move with a Greyhound right over here. And the third one will be to move with their mortar team right over here. Basically, the US has finished to use their command points, but here there is something that I would like you to see with the Greyhound. So this dice means that once per maneuver phase, this specific unit will be able to move one more hexagon even if it exceeds the three command points that this faction already spent on this uh, turn. So we already saw that we spend the three command points, but the Greyhound would like to move one more hexagon right over here. So he will use this die, he will spend it, so we will turn it on the other side, and it will move one hexagon right over here. And now we can remember that this Greyhound already used this ability for this maneuver phase. The Wehrmacht want to move their Kubelwagen four steps. So one, two, three, and using the dice, one more over here. The US will move their rifleman squad two more hexes, and they will advance their mortar squad one more hexagon. The Wehrmacht will take their MG42 team and will enter this building. How do you do that? First of all, they will advance two steps. So one, two. And in order to enter a building, you have to spend one command point. It's important to add that if you entered with a specific unit to a building, you will not be able to go out with that unit until the next maneuver phase. So the last thing is that this unit will go right over here. Also, it's important to add that the only two units that are able to go into buildings are MG42 units and the basic infantry. So for the US, it will be the rifleman, while for the Wehrmacht, it will be the grenadier. Other units like mortar teams or anti-tank guns are not able to go into buildings. The last thing that the US will do is to move their mortar team one more step right over here. And they decide to forfeit their last two command points. The Wehrmacht will move their grenadier unit two steps right over here. So, one and two. And they will forfeit their last command point. We already saw the different range that different units have. Now that we're in the second damage phase, let's see how the different units will apply damage to each other. So the first thing that we see is that we have an MG42 team that is in range of two hexagons from this rifleman team. And that means that the rifleman team will be pinned. So we will take this dice right over here and we'll put it on the plastic tray of the rifleman squad. So this means a few things. First of all, this unit will not be able to move, will not be able to capture points, will not be able to apply damage, it will not be able to repair. 
and this pinned status will go away only in the beginning of the next maneuver phase. But they will still be able to roll for a defense, to be reinforced and to spot for other units. So when we will apply damage, the MG42 team will apply one anti-infantry damage against this rifleman squad. The rifleman squad will not be able to apply damage to the MG42 unit, but they can be spotters for the mortar team that we have behind this building right over here. And as we remember, the mortar team has high explosive damage that they can shoot above buildings. So we will take this dice of damage with high explosives and we'll put it right next to it. To resolve this, we will take one health from this unit right over here. So we will take one soldier from the tray. And that means that they will take one of these universal die that we have right over here, this cube, and put it in the experience section just like this. And to resolve damage in this place right over here, I will remind you that even though infantry are totally vulnerable for high explosive damage, this unit will have two defense rolls because they are inside a building. So we will take two defense die and we will roll them. And here we can see that we have one red side and one black side. And that means that this MG42 unit has escaped damage because they can use this black side over here from their defense rolls. But just to make sure that we understood, if this mortar team would have had another high explosive damage, that means that with this roll, the unit of the Wehrmacht over here would have taken one damage. After finishing the damage phase, again, we will go to the supply phase. So we can see that even though we have a green unit uh, in a hexagon with an objective, this unit will not be able uh, to capture this point because they are pinned. But on the other side, we can see that this green unit of the Wehrmacht can capture this point. So they will take one of the flags and we'll put it right over here. Then each faction will adjust uh, their income. So basically the only thing that changed in this round is that now the Wehrmacht uh, has an income of one victory point and each faction now will adjust their stockpile. So let's just take an example over here. We're going to have two manpower because of this, still one ammunition. Here we have still two fuel and here we're going to have one victory point. So you already understood it correctly because the next maneuver phase, it will be the US that will decide if they want to start or not because they have less uh, stockpiled victory points. Now let's talk about what we can do with those experience points. Experience points will use us for two things. The first one is to upgrade the different units, as you can see right over here uh, in the buildings. And the other one is to use the commander cards. Now, basically, you don't need to commit to any one of them, at least until you decided to go with the first upgrade that we have on the left of each card. The moment that you decided uh, to do the first upgrade, you will not be able to change anymore your commander card. On every commander card, we'll have some ability types. We'll have passive abilities, paper use abilities, unit spawns and upgrades, and alternate upgrade choices. So for example, we can take this card and if we decide to pay the two experience points that we see right over here, we will have an ability that is called Mechanized Doctrine. And it says that Kubelwagens can spend one munition to repair an adjacent vehicle to health. So when we will decide which commander card we want, we just need to put it right over here. We will pay the two experience points that we can see right over here and we'll mark it with one universal cube by putting it right over here. Now, whenever we will want, we'll be able to pay one munition in order to use this ability. The next time in the supplies phase, if we will have two experience points, we will be able to upgrade the second part of this card, again, by paying these two experience points, marking it right over here. And then we will have the second ability, which says fortified armor cars. And then we can see that this kind of vehicle, SDKFZ, which pretty much looks like someone linked on a keyboard, 222, spawn with their defense upgrade. And also one spawns for free. So this is a mix of passive ability and a unit spawns and upgrades. So the moment that we will do this, we'll immediately take the appropriate vehicle, put it in one of the hexagons in the spawning area. But also it says that every time we will spawn one of these vehicles, it will spawn with already their defense upgrade that we can see right over here. And that means that we will take 
this dice and put it next to the vehicle with this side up. Another function that we have in this game with different units or abilities is the camouflage. So over here at the Jaeger Infantry Doctrine says that we have something that is called hidden training. Infantry can upgrade to camouflage. This is a per per use ability, so we will pay for munition. And then we'll be able to add this die right over here to a specific infantry. Camouflage ability means that it can be spotted only by adjacent units. And that means that if we have this rifleman squad right over here, it will not be able to target the grenadier unit right over here because it is camouflaged. But it does mean that a, the grenadier unit will be able to target the rifleman a squad. If on the other side, this unit would have been over here, then it would have been able uh, to detect the camouflaged unit that we have right over here. 